Welcome everybody to Arizona Real Estate News. I'm your host, Rick McComb with EXP Realty with Pat McMasters with Price Mortgage and Ruby Graff with Century 21 Arizona Foothills. Jackie is on vacation driving back from California. How is everybody today? Good, how are you doing? No, let's be honest, you fired her, didn't you? <laughs> she couldn't cut it. Might, she couldn't I cut it with us. Huh? <laughs> I might fire her when she gets back. <laughs> <laughs> she, she joined a union, and we're uh, we're uh, um, this, this yeah, state we're freelancers. Is, uh, what do we call yeah. this state? So yeah. So anyway, we had to had to get rid of her. So I'm gonna run through some stuff kind of rather quickly here, and maybe not as fast as people want me to. But um, it's very interesting what's going on in the market. Some some of the things that I look at in the numbers and. And as my seven day moving averages here, and I'll put us down on the bottom here, the chart shows up a little bit bigger, but um, there's a lot of chatter out there that says inventory is way up. Sellers are putting their, you know, their homes on the market at a record pace. And that's actually not true. Cause you look at what the real problem is. The blue line here is the number of homes that have come on over the past seven days and the red line a number of contracts. And that number is what's driving the increase in listings. Because while the listings are coming on a little bit faster than normal, the sellers are, are they've exited the building. They're gone. We used to be at about 38 to 4,000 homes every seven days going to contract. And we hit mm -hmm. a low of 2,300. And mm -hmm. so the real story of the day is not how much inventory is climbing, but how big the gap is here between the number of homes on the market and, the, and the number of homes that are going under contract. That is the story of supply and demand that's driving uh, this, this market right now. And when you take a deeper dive into who it is that's listing their homes, it's not, it's people that are actually uh, bringing inventory forward. They were going to sell maybe in the fall, but they're deciding now that they're going to sell now. We're not right. seeing panic selling. Big difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but because the buyers have exited the market in such a huge number, we're seeing monthly average sale, sales price per square foot now start to come down. No. Buyers are not willing to overpay now and they're yep. waiting and it's not hurting them to wait. They're taking an interest rate risk, but a lot of them, the interest rate already went too high for them to stay in the game anyway. So they're like, no harm, no foul. I can just sit back and watch and they're doing it on, greater numbers every every week and here's the contract ratio this is by city so you show here chandler's like below 100 and you can pull up um phoenix here and look at that and they're at 50. so the number of homes going under contract are plummeting on, on a weekly basis this is the weekly listing count and I actually uh, put a video out yesterday talking about what is normal because, you know, for the longest time we talked about, well, normal is 27,400. So when we hit that, we'll be in a balanced market. Total, totally wrong statement. What will get us to a balanced market is where we're at now, which is when the gap between the number of homes for sale and the number of homes that are going under contract reach that balanced point. And that is what we see the Crawford Market Index do. And you can see that they're all almost at 100 right now. So that's the measurement between supply and demand. So if we ever got to 27,000 units today, um, and we're only, sell, only putting 2,800 homes under contract, um, this chart would look pretty bleak. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Crawford Market Index will be, will be way down there. So, um, the, the buyers right now, they're definitely not willing to overpay. Um, they are getting offers accepted for contingencies. That number has not jumped up. What has jumped up are price changes, price reductions. And we're about, we're at about uh, 4,600 <clears throat> homes have lowered their price in the past seven days. <clears throat> that used, it used to be about, um, 1700 1500 to 1700 <clears throat> so that keeps going up so sellers are figuring out that that uh you know the first of july is a lot different than the first of may right now the mm -hmm. hard part for sellers right now is 
figuring out their asking price. Because when you pull comps, where do you pull comps from? Usually three months back. Yeah. First, first two months don't yeah. count mm -hmm. anymore, right? Right. So it's getting really hard to comp. And then really the even the last month, it, not yeah. even looking at the last month, the figures are different. Yeah, it's uh, and I was comping one yesterday and I went and met with her and, uh, you know, they were looking at a town home and she said, we'd like to get 415. And I just had to be frank and say, I don't see it. I, it's not. Mm -hmm. It won't happen. Um, yep. You're not even comping over 370 right now. Well, the other one, they're asking 450. I said that thing, it's either going to expire or he's going to turn it into a rental. It won't go for 450. So that's what the market, <clears throat> excuse me, is facing now. But the big surprise this week, Pat, is CPI came in hot and rates did what? Yeah, uh, rates, you know, rates kind of just uh, <laughs> did their thing. It was really interesting. It was right here. I mean, let me see if I can uh, pull this back a little bit here that last quarter. I mean, this is the... This was the numbers on, you know, this is the last couple of days when the CPI, this this was today, you know, yesterday, uh, we saw the 10 year is at 295. Um, yesterday, you know, like today is down 19, 19 basis points on the four and a half coupon. Um, what's really interesting is that if this last two days had hit, six, seven, eight months ago. I mean, you just have to see how the market's been absorbing all this information because if it would have hit six, seven, eight months ago, we would have had a bloodbath. This this last two days should have been a bloodbath for the bond market. Correct Correct me if so I'm wrong. they're just expecting it, right? So they're just- Yeah, you know, it's kind of like- They, they um, knew inflation was going to be high despite yeah. what everybody was thinking. So they've already factored that in, but we went from like um, 5.7 to five. Point seven rates, <laughs> rates went from uh, you know they went from the low fives up to the low to mid sixes, then they backed off last week to five point three, five point two, five point four, and today the PPI, the producer price index, rose you know one point one percent. You know it's basically now it that's on a monthly basis. In June it did, it's eleven point three. So you know, I mean. The way, what I take from it is, is that um, <laughs> the market, just like it had been expressed in the last couple of podcasts, the market kind of knows what kind of market we're in now. So we're just going to slog along here. And like I said, rates are in the low, low 5%, mid 5% range. Um, so, you know, now they're expecting the feds to do a 1%, you know, hike possibly. But when are they, when are they expecting that? Well, uh, they mate in two weeks, so. You so know, if they're August. expecting that, if they're if the market is expecting a bigger leap, how come it hasn't been reflected in the bond market yet? That's good, you know, million dollar question, really. Um, yeah. um, yeah, I just think that, you know, the market's kind of putting all this together and saying, okay, there's going to be, whether it's 10, 10.5 or 11, we're in, we're in just a very tough inflation. I'm just gonna, I'm generalizing it, making it very simple, but the market, at least I'm just conceptualizing it simply. But um, I think the market just realizes now, okay, this is where we're at, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And we're just gonna, that's why, remember beginning of January, I said, I think, I, I kind of saw this. I mean, you saw the inflation stuff. You and I would talk about this for over a year. You know, I always said that, I just felt the, these guys are lying to us and they really don't know what they're doing. Honestly, I, I'm kind of, you know, disappointed in uh, the whole thing, but now they're trying to play catch up. And that's why I think they might pull in the 1%. Now, if they do bump it up a percent, you know, obviously we're going to see kind of a uh, jittery day that day. Cause if, you know, I mean, cause that basically says the feds are still way behind the eight ball. If yeah, they do three yeah. quarters, they're expected three quarters, but I think if they do a point, um, you know, that could obviously, that's going to, it's going to be an interesting day. But well, Ruby, uh, what are they telling you out in the street there? What are you seeing between buyers and sellers? Well, I have buyers that were excited about the um, the market or the interest rate going down. So they're ready to just jump out there and start looking again. Um, I have sellers uh, coming soon. I haven't gotten one single call on from an agent, an investor, from anyone. So that um, that's kind of concerning. We're hoping to go 
we had some repairs that needed to be done. We're hoping to go actually active within the next couple of days, but really concerned that I haven't had one call on it. Um, and then two other properties went um, active in the same community for about $40,000 less, 30 to 40,000, one's 30, one's 40. So that's kind of a huge issue too, where we priced, like you were just talking about, about um, what was going on two months ago, even a month ago. And so we're gonna have, my seller's gonna have to come down in price. So that's kind of where we're at. But two new things coming on. Um, one of our new, uh, one of our viewers um, reached out. So um, we'll see how we can do with those for him. What is the mix of sellers that you're seeing? Are you seeing people um, selling out of, out of fear? Because I, I don't really see that in the numbers. Yeah, no, not really out of fear. It's more, uh, well, if I, I was thinking about selling and if the market's going to continue to possibly go down, then we probably should make that choice and go ahead and do it now. But not really out of fear. They were already thinking about selling or, you know, the investors with the fix and flips, you know, that's just their game. They, they watch it. They know it's coming. They're not fearful so far. So they're still just doing, you know, what they do every day. So. Yeah, I watched the numbers this morning on Altos Research, and he looks at things nationally. And basically, he's he's showing that, like you said, it's just it's a forward uh, listings are coming in now. Um, mm -hmm. You know that we're probably going to come in 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 September, October. Right. So, um, and that's what he's seeing nationally. He's saying the markets that were the hottest, like Phoenix and Boise and Austin, are seeing the biggest pullback now. But he also said that. Um, that nationally inventory tends to increase over the 4th of July week. However, in Phoenix, we didn't. I'm just right. saying, I'm curious, um, you know, we're down to 2,800 contracts. Um, how much lower can that go, you guys? What do you think? I mean, is it yeah. possible that it can go even lower? I mean, I think so. I mean, we're, we're in the dead heat of summer in Arizona. So we we have seen trends of it being slower in, in this month. A lot of people get their last minute vacations in before school starts and they're mm -hmm. prepping for school. So that affects what's going on as well. So right now we have a multitude of things happening. We've got the rates, we've got the inventory, um, you know, vacations, last minute vacations, that school shopping. So all kinds of things are happening. So I think I think we could probably go down a little bit more. And I think that's what we'll see. I'm seeing on my end too. I mean, I I've had two people say that uh, some prequels are like, you know, I'm just going to sit back and see mm -hmm. kind of what happens. Uh, they're not in a rush. I mean, I just had a couple of people like you said do that, and I I emailed them back and said I kind of agree. <laughs> you yeah. know, I mean, it's um, we're kind. I think we're probably in the just the beginning, you know, sort of the beginnings of this, you know, everybody buyers is just kind of, you look at, the, you, now I think we know, we, you know, for my take, I look at all the numbers, I get caught up in interest rate, you know, the, the CPI numbers and all this, but then I try to, you try to do, I do, I do a step back and say, okay, where are we at psych, psychologically? Cause remember Rick, remember back a couple of years ago, I said, was it the idea is the old saying psychology leads into the numbers and you know, blah, blah, blah. I can't remember what beautiful saying I had. I have to it pull was that probably up. Epic. Yeah. It was, it was yeah. epic. Uh, it was a. I think it was great, you know, carved in stone in yeah, Scotland. Yeah, surprised somewhere. Forbes and Bloomberg didn't pick it up. Yeah. You, you should have written it down. I, I wrote it down. I have to look for it. I have to look for it because it was pretty damn. Uh, yeah, it was pretty damn good. Um, you know, it talks about the numbers that numbers lead into psychology, and psychology kind of pulls the market. But you know, I simplistically speaking, I mean, we're just seeing buyers. Like I said, they got beaten up. They're just sitting back. Uh, they saw rates go up. The inflation. Um, the sellers are kind of, you know, they're the, the peak target was probably about a month and a half, two months ago. You know, there's going to be some, I, it just feels almost feel, this almost feels like the period that we had when we were going through COVID, the beginning of COVID people were like, not sure what to do. You know, they're like, Oh, I don't know if I should do this or do that. And they were scared. There's kind of that same scared feeling a little bit. Well, the, if I'm the wrong. Target Walmart numbers are very curious. And I think, uh, there were some economists that actually, predicted it because keep in mind these that you know when walmart orders stuff you know they get it right away in fact walmart's expertise yeah. is is no time in the warehouse so they've yeah. got a computer system was invented by ross perot that 
that as soon as you scan this, it tells the warehouse you need one Dasani Excellent. water. Um, when it gets up to 12, it orders a case. So it, oh, it, wow. it sends it to you. You know, it says, uh, send it yeah. to me when I'm up to 100 cases. And well, that's all out the window now. So what they did was they, they, they ordered as much stuff as they could, like twice as much as they could because they didn't think they'd get any of it. Well, mm -hmm. it started showing up. So now most of the stuff that showed up were household goods and clothes. So mm -hmm. that affected Target and Walmart and JC Penney. And yep. so now they've got too much inventory. So now they're trying to slash prices to get rid of it, but they still have critical shortages on on food. So the whole thing is, is out of whack. Mm -hmm. And in our real estate market now, we can't even talk seasonality. It just doesn't, we, we no longer have it because it's been such a mess for so long here. And I think yeah. um, uh, this market is does not look like it's imploding. It doesn't look like to me that mm -hmm. That there, there is definitely pricing pressure, no doubt. We'll probably mm -hmm. be down to 2021 prices by the end of the well, summer. Well, Tina Tambor said we're 2018, right? Didn't she say? Or was that on the no, on I the company? thought we'd be to December 2021. Um, thought we'd get there. 2021, okay, yeah. Yeah, the 2018 pricing would be pretty brutal for a lot yeah, of Yeah, no, that's right, okay. But even that's as we right. get down to that, I mean, there's nobody that's going to have to, oh my gosh, i got to sell my house. And- um, my advice to, to clients was, you know, if you're comfortable with the payments, stop look, looking at your equity. Just ignore it. You know, go right. we'll check that later on. But there is a, an idea out there, Pat, I wanted to ask you about. And that is the sellers buying down the rate for buyers. So if they're looking at their house and they're saying, I'm going to go down $10,000. Mm -hmm. The example I saw was, well, that'll save the seller, the buyer. $47 a month if you mark the mm -hmm. price down 10000 But if you take that same 10000 and you buy them down um, three points, uh, that gets them down to like four and seven eighths and it saves them $287. Yeah. We're going to see more of that. We're going to see more of that. I think, uh, well, there's a three, two, one buy down. There's a two, one buy down. There's a one, there's a one buy down. I mean, basically the three, two, one, is I just saw an example that my uh, marketing guy pulled up. He, it was pretty expensive. It was like twenty five thousand dollars. You know, twenty six thousand wow. dollars. I mean, you, typically you get a two one buy down. The two one buy down will typically fit into a concession uh, level of pricing. Basically, typically be eight, nine, ten thousand, eleven thousand dollars, give or take. Um, you know, I my personal opinion is, is that uh, some of these retail mortgage banks are doing the two one buy down because their rates were higher to me it was just guy i mean this is my i kind of you know kind of gimmicky like we're gonna get our rates lower so we're gonna do a two one buy down because um i'm doing some number crunch in here today i started doing it yesterday but what a two one buy down would be versus just a, a permanent buy down you know there's a permanent you can just buy buy the rate down you know and sit on that for a while i mean with my rates that's why I said some of these banks that with higher rates are going to get gimmicky with, okay, we got to do a two, one buy down to kind of compete with other, other mortgage banks. So it's not a bad idea though. It's, that's, uh, so if you're looking at, you know, a house that hasn't sold and right now, you know, if it hasn't sold in a week, everybody panics. Um, I've been seeing a lot of, uh, I'm not seeing an uptick in expireds. I'm also not seeing uh, a cha change in uh, back on market. It's still 800 units. It's consistently been 800 units. Mm -hmm. Um, we had a spike for like two days of expireds uh, that happened at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. uh, but people are getting very antsy if their home hasn't sold in a week because we're used oh, to yeah. traffic coming in and we're waiting for, for people to, to call and show. Some of the things that aren't working are real estate agents offering a higher commission to the buying agent. It's You're not going to entice a buyer just because the buying agent is getting a higher commission. We don't <laughs> drag people to listings. So, but you're not you're not going to entice the buyer, but you will entice the agents to show those listings more over the other one. It's not really supposed to be that way, but it does happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it happens. Yeah. I, and I believe we work hard for it. So we, um, whenever we can, we always offer the the three percent on our side to our. Buyers I offered agents. a I offered a five percent once on a test. Because <laughs> I, I, this house wasn't moving, I, and I thought, yeah, I'm just gonna yeah. end. 
every agent called me and I said, did you see the 5% cold broke? Yeah, I thought that was a mistake. <laughs> well, we do bonuses a lot. If we have a house that's sitting, um, we do bonuses and that does um, drive the realtors as well. I mean, I don't yeah, know. people got to try everything. Uh, I'm seeing we some do. real estate agent uh, Facebook groups where you can see some of the questions that uh, you can tell their brand new agent that they ask and you just kind of go, who boy, <laughs> but it's, it's making people try. The most common question I'm seeing out there now is what else can I do to market the home? Right. So number one. Well, question we, out there. Yeah. And um, as far as seller or listing agents, you have to get back to the basics. You have to get back to what you did before. Everything was just handed to you by throwing it in the MLS. You have to go out and find that business. You have to go out and locate, you know, knock on doors, make phone calls. So it's really getting back to the basics. As far yeah, as right now in, in this market, if you're priced right and you've got good terms, you'll sell your home. Exactly. Do you think, uh, just to jump in here quick, you guys, do you think, um, you know, the big rave on our end was, you know, the, the cash only offer financing programs where you pay cash for it and then you refinance it, um, you know, the rush to pay cash, do you see that kind of uh, subsiding or is it, do you mm -hmm. hear about anything on that? Not seeing as much cash. I mean, yeah. in terms of people say, I have to pay cash to get this house and, you know, rush well, they in don't and... need, they don't need to now. Cause there's no, there's no competition. Yeah. yeah. I always, I kind of knew, I kind of, it's kind of like day late and a dollar short. I, I had, I was just talking to my, uh, my Richard, my partner, loan partner. And, uh, I said, it's amazing how lenders, you know, they're really late to the party because the last two, three, four months, all these lenders were coming out with this. Hey, we're gonna we got a cash only. You know, if you have a house, you, we could do cash only you know, financing for you, where you pay cash and then you refinance later. That really is that's kind of a dead program now. Mm -hmm. I'm still getting a to... lot of uh, inquiries via text from flippers that want to know if I have any junk to sell. But there, that's always going to be there. People are always looking for junk and right. uh, yeah. see if they can find something. So, well, everybody, look, have a right. fantastic weekend. You got one more thing, Pat? Nope, nope. I just said uh, have a good weekend. All right. <laughs> Talk to our millions of viewers. Yeah. See Thank you guys. You. Bye. Bye.